Hello, welcome to our channel. In this video, we will talk about increasing and decreasing functions. So these are the definitions here. A function is increasing in an interval i. If for any a less than b, we have f of a less than f of b. Let's look at what that means on a graph. So if A is here and B is here, for any function F, let's say F of A is over here. That means we'll have a point on the graph over here. Then we need F of A less than F of B if the function is to be increasing. So F of B can be somewhere over here. So we'll have a point over here. So the graph will look like this. So basically increasing means we have a function that is sloping upward in this particular interval for these x values. The same thing with decreasing. Our function is decreasing if for any a less than b x values, we have f of a greater than f of b. So in this case, we require f of b to be below f of a. So we can have f of b over here in this case. So the graph will look like this one. So in this case, sloping downward. So this will be decreasing. And it's a constant if for any a and b, f of a and f of b are the same. So that means we'll have a horizontal line. So neither decreasing nor increasing. This we call constant function. So it's a horizontal line with slope zero. So these are the basic definitions of increasing, decreasing, and constant function. Let's look at some examples next. So in this case, we want to determine the intervals where the function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. When we say intervals, we want to report x values where the function is behaving this way, increasing, decreasing, or constant. So we can look at, so we can start from the, negative end. So we can start from the left end here. So here we have negative infinity at the far left end. And it looks like the graph is decreasing for all these x values up to here, so which is negative three. So let's put that down here. So the graph is decreasing from negative infinity to negative three. And then it's increasing for these x values from negative three to up to zero. So for these x values, the graph is going upward. It's increasing negative three to zero. And again, after zero from here, all the way up to here, see the graph is going downward. So for all these x values, the graph is sloping down. So again, decreasing from zero to, so this x value here is, three from zero to three, the graph is decreasing. So after this point here, from three to infinity, the graph stays horizontal. That means the function is constant. So in this interval, three to infinity, the function is constant. So these are the intervals where the function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. So if you're given a graph of a function to decide where the function is decreasing, increasing, or constant, all you need to look at is where it's sloping downward, where it's sloping upward, and where it's constant, where it's horizontal. Okay, let's look at the next example. Again, here we can start looking at the graph from the left end point, so x value of negative infinity. So it looks like all the way up to this point here, which is two, the function is sloping downward. So the graph is decreasing from negative infinity to two. The function is decreasing from negative infinity to two. After two, all the way up to five, we have this graph here, which is again decreasing. So decreasing from two to five, 
and after five, it's increasing. But that happens only up to this point where x value is seven. So from five to seven, the function is increasing. So five to seven, the function is increasing. And after seven, it, it, it starts to decrease again. And that happens for all values on the right side of seven. So from seven to infinity, the function is decreasing again. So these are the intervals where the function is increasing and decreasing and it's constant nowhere because we don't see any part of graph that is a horizontal line. Right, so we're done with this example. Next, let's quickly talk about relative or local maximum and minimum. So we say a function f has a local a relative maximum at a point C if the value of function at that point is largest compared to all other Y values around that point. So for example, if you look at it in terms of a graph, so a relative maximum will look like this one. So the graph will have relative maximum over here if this is the highest point. That means the, all the other values must be below this point. So if you are standing here, then you must feel like you are at the top of the hill around the point where you are. So within a small neighborhood here, if you don't look too far, you must feel like you, you are at the top. And the graph can continue like this. And we can have another relative maximum over here because if you are standing here also, you will again feel like you are at the top. So if you look only within a small neighborhood, and if you don't look at that point, this point over here, you will again feel like you are at top of a hill. So this is an, another, another relative maximum. Basically, you will feel like you are at top of a small locality. We just look around a small locality around yourself. So that's why we call these local maximum. So these two are local maximum in this case. Similarly, if you're standing over here, you'll feel like you're at a bottom. So this is local minimum. Although there may be another point which is even below this point, this is still local minimum because you are only limited to a small locality around that point. So you are, lo you are not looking too far. That's why we call it local minimum. So this will also be another local minimum. So in this case, we have these two as local minimums and these two as local maximums. So let's look at more examples. So let's look at this first graph here. We want to decide where we have local minimum and local maximum. So if you are standing over here, you will feel like you are at a bottom. So this is a local minimum. And if you're standing over here, you will feel like you are at top. So this is local maximum. It may be tempting to think this as local minimum, but this is not local minimum because if you look at this side over here, you are not at the bottom. So this is not local minimum. Now let's look at the second one. So we have one local minimum here. because if you're standing here again, you will feel like you are at the bottom. And we have one local maximum over here. All right, so we are done with these examples and this is all I have put together in this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already.